crazy as it seems, China has made a quantum leap since I last looked at one of their last ultra-fast 50mm lenses. And now, we have one of their latest and supposedly greatest. And this is Zhongyi Speedmaster 50mm T1.0. Let's go! This is Jimmy Chang from Red35. I'm a London-based photographer and filmmaker. Zhongyi is not strange to anyone who's been following this channel. I've reviewed their 17mm and 25mm T1.0 lenses back in 2021, and even their 17mm f0.95 back in 2019. So exactly what's changed just over a year? Well, let's find out. This 50mm T1.0 Speedmaster is a cine lens. And of course, it has the usual metal teeth on both focus and aperture rings. And similar to its older cousins, Zhongyi didn't cheap out on using full metal barrel construction that can easily break a tank. Overall aesthetic can only be described as functional. <laughs> and I wouldn't say it's particularly pretty to look at, but at least I like its yellow markings that are beautifully engraved onto the metal surfaces. But making no mistake that this is a Zhongyi Speedmaster Cine lens, as it basically share the same physical design as its cousin, the 17, 25, and 35mm T1.0 Cine lenses. <music> Having said that, it's big enough to upset the balance of any micro four-third cameras except the beast, the Olympus EM1X, which feels kind of natural due to its large size. However, this only applies if you're using just the camera and lens combo only. As soon as you start to rig up your setup, you'll find everything start to make sense, if not a little on the heavy side. Again, the overall weight and size is still going to beat larger formats. So as a photography lens, a little on the heavy side, but perfect for video. Well, this is where the quantum leap goes, and quite importantly so. And ultimately, you are buying a lens to capture what lies before you. So image quality is always going to be important. And since I reviewed their 17 and 25 millimeters a year ago, I can tell you just how much this latest 50 millimeters has improved. As you can see, central sharpness is pretty darn impressive. The magenta hue and halo that played the original trio of Zhongyi Cine lenses are completely gone, resulting a pretty solid and commendable picture quality. Though, if you want optimal sharpness and details, you must stop down to T2.8, and diffraction will kick in at around T11. Corners are a little soft, as expected for this kind of lenses, and there is a hint of coma at wide open, and things will improve of course, <laughs> when stopped down. But if you want optimal corner performance, T4 is your best friend. However, all I just said is based on a full sensor size readout. So that means it's for photography. But unless you're shooting in open gate in some video cameras, using this lens in video, well, you are literally cropping the worst corners out, resulting a very usable range from wide open T1 all the way to T11 before diffraction really ruins your shot. Being a 50mm lens means that distortion should never really be an issue, unless the optic engineers messed up the design or someone just fell asleep during the lens assembly. And because it's an optically corrected lens, this is definitely an aspect that betters all of its cousins. 
and vignette, however, is very visible if you use this thing as a stills or photography lens. In love with what I said in many of my lens review before, I personally like the vignette for my portrait works, so it's not really a concern, at least for me. <laughs> but if you want a consistent bright frame, well, T2.8 will be the resolution. As before, if you use this lens for video, you won't see much of that dark corners as it cropped the central portion of the image circle. So just be mindful if you're using this uh, lens in open gate situations, because you will see some uneven darkness in your frame if you start to move around the frame. Straight to the point, chromatic aberrations still exist, but much improved from previous Speedmasters. And this shows the continuous improvement from Zhong Yi, which I'm very happy to see. As a photography lens, you will see the chromatic aberration at wide open aperture settings between T1 to T2, but by no means harsh or destructive, and everything can be corrected easily in post. And as it's much improved than its previous versions, as a cine lens, it presents a much higher quality imagery, and perhaps the best Jungi Speed Masters by far. Well, this is a Zhongyi Speedmaster lens in the end. And so, bokeh is very creamy. Vintagely creamy, if there's uh, such a word. But anyway, the rendering of this lens is still leading towards a more the 80s look than a modern 2020 looks if you choose to use its wide open setting at T1. And you will start to get a clinical modern look as soon as you stop down to T2.8 or smaller. So in a way, you have a choice of looks, if you wish, which may appeal to some photographers and videographers. Breathing is a non-issue, which is quite refreshing to see, after experiencing lots of other budget Chinese cine lenses that breathe as hard as Darth Vader. And gear ratio is wide but linear, which is ideal for a 50mm lens. So, any seasoned videographers should be very happy to use it on any of their rigs. You can kind of sense that I like Zhongyi's latest Speedmaster offering. This 50mm T1 is probably, by far, the best T1 Cine lens I've tried. Better than the 17 and 25mm that I reviewed last year and a whole mile better than the 17mm.95 that I reviewed two years ago. And on that note, I must congratulate Zhongyi's effort in improving the optical formula of this lens. And remember, you can use cine lenses as photography lens, so long you don't mind the clickless aperture and the teeth focus and aperture rings. And having watching the whole review, should you avoid the Speedmaster, consider it, shortlist it, or just go ahead and buy it. Well, I think you should shortlist it if you're on the market looking for an ultra-fast 50mm lens for your Micro Four Thirds system, either for stills or videos. It's definitely better than other budget 50mm.95 lenses I reviewed so far. And if, yeah, it's a big if, if you don't mind the size, because it's considerably large, uh, larger than other fast 50mm lens I reviewed on this channel, and much larger than the Viewtrox Cine Lenses series even though that this, uh, you know, the view choice is a T1.5 and not a T1. But <laughs> this is the end of the review. So you know what to do now. Give me a thumb if you enjoy watching the review and find it useful. And also sub if you want to stay in touch with all things photography, filmmaking, and of course, Michael Four Third. Peace. <laughs>
something in my lung. So uh, I've been taking steroids and uh, just trying to rid the symptoms. Uh, it's a lot better. I can breathe a lot smoother now, so at least I can talk a little bit properly. Just not for long. You know, I can see that I still have to breathe in a little bit harder and uh, just to suck a lot more air, air into my lung. Uh, so I can't really walk too far, just kind, just can't do things like normally. It's just a bit annoying, really. Uh, but anyway, I'm I'm recovering, hopefully, and uh, and uh, so I will be able to uh, get back to my normal routine. Uh, Job-wise, I'm still chock a block, especially actually October. I didn't expect that, but suddenly October is packed. So uh, my calendar is currently full with uh, appointments, which is really good. Um, the, so for my business um, so review of course I'm going to continue trying to do as much as I can and also I really do have a few uh, uh, products to review and I'm just trying to get rid of them as uh, well not get rid of them but trying to catch up as much as I can because they are exciting they're really cool and uh, you know like the Jungi's you know Cine lens is actually actually pretty amazing and uh, if you are still watching I <laughs> uh, just want to give you some ideas what I'm going to do over the next two months uh, I'm going to have some specials uh, for Christmas time and also I'm trying to organize a, uh, a photo walk to us uh, I think probably the middle or end of November you know when there's more Christmas lightings up uh, that should be quite good for some uh, night photography so if you guys want to join me remember to get in touch and uh, also uh, uh, is the uh, uh, I would say the uh, the product of the year, you know, like uh, this is something I've been thinking about because I've reviewed so many stuff, uh, so many lenses and other stuff. I'm starting to think that maybe I should do a yearly award kind of thing, you know, just to uh, reiterate, you know, after all those tests and reviews of which one is the best lens or best things that I've tried uh, for the for the year. So this is actually quite good because uh, you know I could say very good for everything or very bad for everything, but like exactly which one is the best, right? You know, out of all of them. So like I'm, I might do that, and uh, depending on the time, and uh, that should give you an idea, you know, what, that whether that is actually very, very good or not. Uh, so yeah, I, I might do that. So um, let me know, if, you know, what your thoughts about the uh, 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 the best product thing or best lens or best camera or whatever. And uh, if you like to he see some of those uh, videos, and uh, let me know in the comment section below. I certainly will do that. But anyway, don't want to waste your time too much. And uh, I do have a lot more things to come. Look and see that uh, I have. Other lenses here. This is actually Viewtrox. Uh, I mentioned in the video earlier. Uh, it's <laughs> well, stay tuned. It's actually pretty cool. Anyway, uh, see you guys all later and uh, have fun wherever you are and keep shooting. Bye.